Hey everybody, it's Pride Elite. Welcome you to our Shadow Gambit The Cursed Crew playthrough. This is the upcoming stealth tactics game from the folks that brought us Desperados 3, and I'm looking forward to it ever since it was first revealed quite some time ago now. You might recognize it from the beta mini-series I did on the channel just a couple of months ago, but this is the near final build of the game, so you're going to see a lot more things that we didn't see back then, including a lot more freedom of choice in terms of which missions we do and in which order. So folks, with a massive thanks to the developers for giving me an early access key with which to showcase the game on the channel, let's go ahead and dive on in. First things first, we have to choose our difficulty, and I'm thinking we stick with pirate difficulty. If we take a look at the details over here, it seems to be a fairly balanced approach to things, and I do believe this is the intended approach for, uh, you know, new players to this game specifically. Again, it says recommended for those who are new or recently returning to the stealth strategy genre. And I think I probably fall into that latter category, even though, yes, I did play the beta just a couple of months ago. Again, we can always turn this up if it feels too easy, but for the time being, this is kind of where I feel comfortable. With that said, let's get this party started. So this is Angler's Grave. Charming little rat hole. Let's find the bar and make a deal before the Inquisition shows up. All right, so first things first, of course, we're starting with the uh, you know tutorialized section of the game. It's going to be relatively easy, as you might imagine, but we'll rush through this because this should be relatively similar to what we saw uh, in the beta build. And uh, we can kind of yeah, rush through this and, and, and get straight into the meat of the game. Now, I'll try and explain the mechanics that uh, need explaining as they need explaining, as opposed to kind of front-loading all the information. I think that probably makes the most sense, but if you feel differently, let me know in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to adjust my approach uh, based on your feedback, of course. And with that said, folks, if you do want to see Shadow Gambit, the Cursed Crew, on this channel, if you'd like to see the series to completion, please don't hesitate to hit the like button and let me know in the comments. It does make a very big difference in just letting me know what people want to see on the channel. So, uh, yeah, feel for you to have your voice heard in that way and have a direct impact on uh, what we do around these parts. With that said, let's go ahead and speak to this lovely fellow over here and uh, meet the Jester. He's on the balcony. Top floor. You are not an easy man to find, Jester. Naturalmente. It ensures I'm only found by interesting people. Now, what can I do for you, Signora Manicato? They say you can arrange things. There's a certain ghost ship I'd like to catch up with. Ah, the Red Marley, yes. I know all about your history with that ship. Then you also know why I'd want to be on it. Signora... The prospect of seeing your fates collide is the entire reason for our meeting. I can get you to the Marley, but I must inform you that she has seen better days. Currently, she's caught in the trap of a certain Inquisitor. So Ignatia has her. Then there's no time to lose. Hmm, still determined, I see. Yes, excellent. Shall we shake on it, then? One more question. What will be your price? Oh, don't worry, Signora. I simply wish to be... entertained. Now, shall we begin? The right is complete. What now? Scour the beach. Let no corruption linger. It shall be done. What? 
abomination! Apologies, but as you well know, death's not the end here. So, one down, possibly a hundred or more to go. I better find my way to the Mali before Ignatia sets her on fire. Huh. According to the stars, this island isn't too far from Angler's grave. Alright, so between talk of ghost ships and these special abilities, I think it's probably quite clear by now that we're playing as undead pirates. And if, you know, those didn't give it away, then perhaps the sword through the chest does. Either way, in this game, unlike Desperados 3, things are a bit more fantastical. And that opens things up to a lot of creativity. It's a ton of fun seeing the different characters with these, you know, otherworldly and ethereal abilities and how you can kind of mix and match them. The devs get really creative with this stuff. We saw that in the beta, so I'm really excited to explore it even further with this uh, full build over here. But uh, again, so this is a stealth tactics game. If you played Desperados 3 or uh, Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun, you'll be familiar with a lot of the systems. Prior to that, of course, if you've played the Commandos games, for example, you might recognize some of the systems. We'll have multiple characters, each with their own special abilities that allow them to, you know, navigate terrain in different ways, allow them to dispatch enemies in different ways, so on and so forth. And of course, it is a stealth tactics game, so you want to try and be as sneaky as possible whenever possible, though, of course, if things do get rough, uh, you're able to, um, you know, engage in, in, in violence as well. Uh, there are certain conveniences that I have to re-familiarize myself with, such as, you know, uh, more convenient ways to rotate the camera. I'll, uh, well, let's see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remind myself, because I got used to it during the beta, but that was a couple months ago, so it'll take some getting used to again, and as soon as I get comfy with it, we're, uh, we're gonna be off to the races, pretty much, because speed and, uh, and confidence is key in a game like this. But, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick, just so we are able to, uh, read through all of these and engage with all of our tools. But yes, let's go in and take this guy down quietly. Again, we've got our melee attack here. Gonna head on up, and that little circle around the Acolyte when I hover over him is exactly how much noise our attack is actually going to make. Doesn't matter right now, but in future scenarios, obviously, it might alert nearby guards of, uh, you know, murder in progress. It's important also to keep in mind the animation length of kills, you know, because, again, if it takes you a long time to kill somebody, and uh, you would have been spotted, or you, you know, you're, you're currently not being seen, but somebody turns around to look at you as you're uh, murdering someone, well, chances are they're going to raise the alarm, right? So you got to keep in mind how long it takes to actually kill people and stuff like that. You, you got to learn your characters and get comfy with them and figure out exactly how to use them and, and, and when to use them as well, because you'll have a huge selection of characters to choose from and uh, you, you'll pick and choose based on the mission you're going on and, and, and their abilities and how you might find synergies between them. Let's take a look over here. This is about the view cone, so if we go ahead and Always a pleasure running into the Inquisition. right click on you, we can see exactly what they can see. Again, the hashed line indicates where we will not get spotted if we're crouching, whereas the solid area indicates where we will get spotted whether we're crouching or not. As you can see, terrain and stuff obviously is a huge factor here. We can hide in the bushes as well, and we can sneak up behind this guy and uh, get the job done. Let's go. Quickly now. Again, I could run, but uh, we'd make noise if we ran. Instead, we just sneak up. Good night, buddy. Nice and easy. I guess the game wants me to change my stance, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, let's move on up to the next book up over here. Rush over and get ready for whatever's next. View cones, right, right. This is just letting us know about light. Maiden's fire lamp. Can't snuff it out. Best keep low and avoid its light. Right, so a lot of lamps you can snuff out, but then they've got uh, Maiden's Fire, which is, again, some mythical stuff to, to play into game mechanics, obviously, that you can't snuff out. So here we have to be very careful about the fact that wherever there is light, you can see it's solid view cones, which means even if we're crouching, we'll get seen. So there's a small gap over here that we can sneak through, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and we can't run, because then we'll stand up and we'll get spotted. So we got to go nice and sneaky-like, push on through, get around Buddy over here. We can climb the uh, vines over here, so let's go ahead and do that. And make our way down from up top, because why not some style? Beauty. 
Nice and easy. Pick that body up, drop it off over here. Not necessary for this tutorial, but building good habits is always a good idea. Uh, there will always be alternating paths as well, by the way. Like, for example, over here. Sorry, not alternating, but alternate. Here, we could have just kind of walked around, but we were indicated to climb. Again, depending on which characters you're actually going in with, you'll actually be able to do different things. Some people can't climb, some people can't swim, so on and so forth. So you have to adapt accordingly. Over here, right, we're being taught about Afia's blink ability. So this will allow us to uh, get up to here and get a kill at the same time. So let's go ahead and get a little bit closer because again, the dotted or the dashed line there indicates our range, but he's in range now and down he goes. Nice and easy. What, you, what is this? Ah, it's a ladder. Cool. In case we wanted to climb up or in case we had friends. Sorry. In case we had friends who couldn't teleport up, now we've dropped a ladder for them. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and pick you up. And I should be able to toss you into the water. Come on. There we go. Can I? That looks like I can't. All right, into the bushes we go. You can toss people into the water, but I don't think we have an angle here. Oh, because this is actually a wall. Couldn't tell from that angle. All right, let's keep moving. And I believe we just want to go, yes, this way. Quickly now. We can run here. And that Did something. Nah. is the quick save feature and the auto save feature that is actually integrated into the story. It's funny, the devs were saying how a lot of people didn't engage with quick save and auto save in Desperados 3, uh, feeling as though it was cheating almost, like saves coming. Except this is the kind of game where you have to do that. It's kind of designed around that kind of stuff. So to encourage players to actually engage with quick saving and auto saves, uh, they've they've built in story reasons, which again is just a, a masterful use of the setting and the more fantastical approach of Shadow Gambit here uh, that's allowed them to integrate it like that. So heads up, this is one of those games where you'll have to quick save multiple times, quick load multiple times, find the solution and push through. All right, so now, okay, you, you can teleport up over here, right? And in regular play, we would have spotted that and we would have gotten up there, but because this is tutorial, we uh, we have to trigger a, a moment here first, which is why that autosave happened as well. So uh, let's go for it. Kill this much more powerful looking prognosticar and see what that does for us. What do we have here? I sense your ill intent, cursed. Now burn in maiden's fire. I suggest you try that again. And there you have it. I'm whole again. I have unleashed a memory. I have given you another chance. What crazy magic is this? Are you... I need your help. Get past the prognostica. Do not attack him directly. Well, well. All right, I'll follow. As for the prognostica... Let's try a different approach. There you have it. Set up for how uh, saving actually works. So we can capture a memory anytime by pressing F5, so that's quick save, and we can unleash the latest memory or a quick load by pressing F8. Use it often, failing and retrying is an intended part of the game. It is essential to participate in the quick saving and quick loading. Of course, you can be a gambler and take a lot of risks, but it's a good idea to use it. If I unleash it, time resets to this moment. That acolyte on the scaffold is my way up. I'll be there soon. I do love that they have an in-universe explanation for it. I don't think it's like necessary, but given the fact that they had the option to do so, I think it's quite nice that they have done so. It's a it's a it's a nice touch. But uh, time to die, buddy. The prognostic I might be able to stop me, but that boulder. Exactly. Go in, and again, pressing H highlights all interactable items, which is probably a good thing to keep on just so we can spot things. And uh, let's go ahead and drop this on this uh, prognostic card. Good riddance. The path is clear. Proceed onward and ascend. I wish to see you face to face. All right. Keep moving. Nothing else to see here, I don't think. Yeah. Roll up this way. And make way over. Now, this guy's body is hidden. This guy's kind of exposed. But again... We don't have to hide everybody, not only because this is a tutorial, but also just in general, uh, sometimes 
patrols don't go where a body is, so you don't have to worry about, like, hiding that specific one. What do we have over here? Right, Afia can freeze a single target in time with her time freeze skill, uh, and this will allow us to, well, you'll see. Don't worry, I have my own tricks up my sleeve. And capture this memory as recommended over here and if we take a look at this guy's vision cones he can see quite a bit actually uh, so if I freeze him I should be able to get up over there and then kill him as well so again pop that on to you get up a nice bit of time impressive now please push onward so I mean we don't even have to kill him if we don't want to because uh, when you time freeze somebody their vision cones and stuff get frozen as well and we were able to waltz right through. Now is anybody watching you? Nope. Alright. Not gonna leave an Inquisitor alive. Down you go buddy. And again you'll notice the two different attacks have different animation lengths so you'll want to adjust your approach accordingly there as well. The same person might have a quick attack as well as a slow attack and if memory serves me correctly... Inquisitor Ignatia has trapped a certain pirate ship here. Ignatia. Yes. As a matter of fact, she... <sighs> What's wrong? Never mind that. Send the ruins. Come to me. <sighs> Hello? You still there? Well, well. Better move fast. Forgot how uh, talkative these two were in the uh, the tutorial. My apologies. I keep interrupting them. Uh, but yes, if memory serves me correctly, you can see exactly what the uh, noise radius is, what the dying duration is, and what the range on these things is. Uh, are as well so you can kind of uh, adjust your approach uh, based on actual cold hard mathematics but let's make our way up these ruins so where do we got to go we got to go all the way up over here up over here and down that way all right fair enough you're looking this way buddy over here is looking that way so we should be able to sneak past no problem use these bushes probably like get up this way now this guy does look around but uh, he's on patrol so we should be able to sneak past this guy might be some trouble We'll have to like time freeze him or uh, stab him on our way up because he's 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 watching that ladder. All right, let's start over here. You won't be able to see me. Well, first of all, let's take a look at this book. What do you got for me? Right, alarms. Fair enough. Just letting us know that uh, when we get spotted, if we get spotted, we trigger an alarm. Our last known location is investigated, and uh, we have to hide for a predetermined amount of time before we can, uh, you know be safe again before the guards stop patrolling uh, more intensely. Now right, we're past you. Let's go ahead up over here. I wonder actually. Let, let, let me check something here. Can I just teleport up there? I think I can. Oh, no. My path might be blocked. Yeah, it looks like my path is blocked. Yeah, alright. Fair enough. I think that's done intentionally so that we're forced to go through this path in the tutorial. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. But uh, it is a very open-ended game. That's kind of the point. Find your own way through these various challenges. Again, depending on which characters you're using and all that kind of stuff. It's... I love these kinds of games. I love this genre. And uh, the devs here, they're, they're masters of their craft, honestly. So, uh, so I'm really excited to have this. Anyway, let's go ahead and freeze this guard. And run over. Go, 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 go. Alright, we're good. Actually, go up. Alright, that was close. <laughs> In concentration and the ah, there she is, the Red Marley, Black Eye Mordecai's ship. And there is Ignatia right on cue. My custodies are ready, ship. A world of agony awaits you. Now tell me. What is the answer to Mordecai's riddle? Ah, Ignatia. Even in death, the captain outwits you. Oh? Then why do I hold his message so clearly intended for you? Now speak! Five of Marley's crew assemble. That much is clear. But what are the relics? What secret lies hidden beneath your deck? I would rather burn than help you find the treasure. Have it your way, ship! Your flagship has been prepared, my Lady Inquisitor. Good. Begin the rite of questioning. I must know what the ship knows. As you command, my Lady. 
Send word among the timeless shores. We must find the relics and solve Mordecai's riddle. His treasure will be ours. And if the shores must burn for it, then it is part of the grand design. Still there, little soul. I am. And it seems I came just in the nick of time, Red Marley. You know my name. Care to tell me yours? All in good time. First, let's set you free. Come to me. Use the giant chains to get on board. Then I will tell you more. All right, let's make our way over. And if it wasn't already clear, we're up against the Inquisition, and uh, they too have mystical powers and magical capabilities. I love their character design as well. It's just so cool. Like, <laughs> I just absolutely love the aesthetic and vibe. Uh, but what do we have over here at time? The uh, big green bell appears on screen. This is the Marley reminding us to capture a memory. It does not automatically capture a memory for us. Oh, that's actually... I don't remember that from the beta. That might be new, or maybe I'm just forgetting it, but that's good to know. That's good to know that the bell is a reminder, not an actual save. She surprised me. Some strange new right of hers. She has experience in subverting my power, but not for long. All right, let's capture that memory, and let's make our way over. Can run past here, can run past here. A couple of guards up over there. We got to get to this chain over here, right? So let's make our way over. Up up there. Let's go. Let's go. Your memory power explains a lot. No wonder Mordecai and his crew became legends. We kept it secret for that very reason. Does it have any limits? Only those set in place by the captain. My reach is the size of an island. And I can't unleash memories older than a day. I'll gladly explain them. Pain. Again, core mechanic is just like, oh, stay low. That was a mistake. Uh, core mechanic is just like part of the, the the narrative. I didn't realize we were standing there. Glad I spotted that. So these two engage in conversation. Buddy over here is looking in that direction. So we're able to easily sneak up behind him. That conversation is very short though. And once it's over, this guy goes up this way and this guy looks down this way. Even though the line is hashed, remember that both of our attacks involve us standing up, so we will get spotted. So we have to wait for that conversation to happen. Get in here, get the kill, hide the body. Now, we don't need to hide the body because the body lays low, right? A dead body typically isn't going to stand. Though I can't really say that considering we are literally playing the undead. Uh, but again, good habits, right? So they're engaged in conversation. Let's go in, rush in, get the kill. Pick the body up right away. And you'll notice that Afia actually stays low when she drags bodies around, so we won't get spotted in hash lines. Some characters, they, uh, you know, they, they stand up when carrying bodies, and that's another thing that you have to be very wary of, and it's another thing that uh, means you have to adjust your approach according to the characters you have on hand. Again, a reminder, you choose which characters you have on hand. You unlock them over time, you choose which order you unlock them in, and then you... Uh, Kind of choose uh, who to take on a mission at any given time and, 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 and adjust based on synergies that you like. Let's go ahead and uh, quick save over here because the game tells us to. And this should be relatively easy. This guy's going to... Okay, here. I've got a bit of a plan. We're going to wait for this guy to leave. All right? He's going to go. Go ahead and get the stab in when he's outside of uh, audio range. And then... Oh, oh, I was really hoping to kind of daisy chain these two. But that's okay. Pick this body up. Stay low. And remember, right, we're in the light right now, so he would have been able to see us even if we were crouching. But now we're hidden, so we're good. You'll notice that his friend is missing, but before he gets a chance to do so, down he goes. And yes, people do adjust their patrols and stuff if they notice that their friend has gone missing. If they were speaking to somebody and they've disappeared, they'll be like, what the, where did you go? And they'll, they'll change their patrol a little bit. Eventually, they'll return to their old patrol, but of course, their timings will have changed because this guy, for example, wouldn't be engaged in conversation anymore. So again, yeah, another thing you have to be wary of as you're uh, kind of making your plans. What do we have here? Okay, let's not get distracted. Let's deal with the ship first. Let's not get distracted by that. Straight to the point. 
These missions will typically, by the way, take place on giant islands, which are very open-ended. I will do it myself. All you must do is break Ignatius' seal. Cool. But yeah, as I was saying, so uh, you'll have multiple entry points, you'll have multiple exit points. You can choose how you get in and how you get out, depending on the mission at hand, where the objective is located on a single island. So it, it's quite expansive. It's very different from any other game in the genre, at least as far as memory serves. So uh, very exciting. It is, it, is, it is very exciting. And this, I think, is also maybe new. All skills have a non-lethal option. It can be toggled in the HUD by pressing the small arrow button above the skill icon or using right mouse while hovering the skill. Your non-lethal melee attack has a dedicated hotkey, Y. I don't remember that from the, uh, the, the the beta. Again, lots of things have changed, and if you want to do a non-lethal run, I guess that is an option now. And I remember wondering about that while we were playing the beta, so uh, th this must be, a, a, again, part of the, uh, the, the, the final build. Just as a heads up, though, this is still an early access build, so while it's near final, there will still be some things that'll get patched uh, on, on release day and stuff like that. Uh, so if you notice any, like, issues or small bugs or glitches, just bear that in mind that this isn't the final, final build, but it is the, uh, you know, just before final build, so to speak. I just wanted to give you a clear heads up as to, you know, setting expectations. Anyway, let's move up and get to the ship and deal with some of these fools. Anybody watching down over here? Oh, there's someone up here. And his patrol does come over here, it looks like. Yeah, there's a reminder. Fair enough. Why not? Looks like the vision cone actually doesn't overlap there. But either way... Me on deck. <laughs> Brace. Looks rather rotten to me. Ignore them. Head for the captain's quarters. Rude. Let's let this guy come through. Let's let him turn around. Then we'll uh, toss this guy overboard. Well, we'll kill him first for good measure. I don't. I just quick save. We're good. All right, let's go in. Down you go, buddy. Down goes his lantern as well. Pick that body up and into the water. You go. Pull back. We should be good here. Move up. Up the ladder. Am I in the clear? I think so. One way to find out is by just diving in. Go ahead and toss you overboard as well. And now we gotta deal with some more advanced enemy types. The Custodes. These guys are kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at this book first. The power of the Custodes is used to keep tears to the blow closed. If they are attacked, they will lose their grip on the right, and the energy release will turn all guards in range catatonic. However, catatonic guards and dead Custodes will not trigger the alarm. So, I do believe this was not there in the, again, previous build. I'm going to stop comparing this to the previous build because it's a lot more different than I'd expected. Uh, this is something that we figured out over the course of playing the, uh, the, uh, early access build, but here it's kind of explicitly stated so you understand exactly how this mechanic works. Pretty sure that was different. Maybe my memory is just that bad. <laughs> Very possible. Very possible. Alright. So this guy goes up that way. This guy's watching the Custodes. If we attack the Custodes, then everybody within that red radius is, uh, is going to, um... Ugh, is that a Custodes? He is maintaining the seal. Disrupt his chant. He's going to turn catatonic. I'm curious now, actually, as we quick save, if we can get both of these kills in. First, you, buddy. That's not the end, Consider it done. Go, 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 go. Down you go. Gives me shivers. Do not pity them. They are but vessels for the maiden's fire. There is another on board. Find him. Good stuff. See you around, friend. And looks like we got plenty of time. So yeah, the the uh, the catatonic states last for quite a bit of time. It doesn't last forever. I remember that, but it, it does give you enough time to get the work done. Again, only in that radius highlighted in red when you're hovering over the uh, the custodies. But look at this character design. Like how cool is that? I just love the armor design and stuff. <laughs> They've got some really cool ideas, um, aesthetically speaking. Well, and mechanically speaking too. But specifically talking about aesthetics there. Pull down in here. Easy enough to take this guy out. This guy will be able to spot us, so let's wait until he's uh, leaving. And hop on down. Pick you up. And you can see how hopping down is a quicker kill than uh, 
than the, 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 the kill animations, right? So, very advantageous when possible. Another one overboard. And how do we get rid of you, buddy? Should be pretty easy. Oh, we're low? Yeah, we're low. Get pretty close. Can he see up here? Oh, he can. He can see a couple of these spots. Glad I checked. Let's tuck in there. Sorry, state. I can recover. The crew is what matters. Where did you take them? Two are still on board. Five were taken to shore. We will rescue them soon. Sounds good. There's another one down. And let's get you overboard. I'm glad I checked this guy's vision cones. Again, situational awareness is extremely important in games like this. Always got to check what's going on. So, all right, this guy's going back and forth pretty quickly. This guy's up top over there. Kind of tucked away in the corner. We should be able to get the kill in. Ooh, but there's more people over here. Okay, I got a bit of a plan. Move up to there. Go ahead and quick save. I think... I'm trying to remember... The play here. So, our custodies friend over here... Will turn one, two, three guys catatonic... And even four if this guy's in there. I should be able to pull the trigger on that and then kill all these guys as they're catatonic, hopefully. And then take care of this guy afterwards. Which is a little different from the uh, the beta run. Which is nice. I'd, I'd like to do things differently if and when possible to keep things fresh. Oh, I see. That's Toya and that's Lady, Two of our future crew. Can I? Just out of reach. He's not looking down this way. Does this guy look into this corner? Because we got to get a little bit closer here, right? So where do you look, buddy? Where do you look? You go there, you stay put for a second. And then you do look this way. Alright. If I try to kill you, no one will hear. I don't think he'll see. I don't think he'll see. So let's go ahead and quick save. Let's head on over to get this kill in. The reason why I'm doing this first is because it'll be fewer people to kill while they're catatonic. Pick this body up. Drop you in this bush. Sneak on over to here. Ah, oh, damn. This guy in here. In we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's go. There's one. That's both of them. Yes. The seal is weak. Come to me. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Gotta get this guy as well. Soon as this one goes down, in we go. You can see it doesn't last all that long. He was standing up as we got that kill in, I think. Good stuff. All right. That was that felt pretty smooth. That felt pretty smooth. Go ahead and quick save on request here. And uh, let's dispatch this fool and uh, speak to the ship. This should be easy enough to do. Down you go, buddy. Can you imagine getting caught at this point in time and having the alarm raised on us? Job well done. Think so. See what the ship has to say. Well, well. Now break the seal. Set me free. First, we have to discuss terms. Really? Now? You are hunting Black Eye Mordecai's treasure. I want in. The captain's hoard. What is it to you? What is a treasure to a pirate, eh? Adventure. Gold. A chance to beat the Inquisition. I'll help you find your captain's legacy. And I only want three shares of the plunder. Preposterous. Half a share. Two and a half. One. Two shares. Hurry now. I bet more acolytes are coming. Fine. I accept your terms. Now break that seal and state your name. A fia monicato. At your service. Ah, my strength is restored. Now we make for the open sea. Brace yourself. All right, good stuff. 
Got ourselves a badge. Finish the mission. I should have checked badges uh, before we completed the mission in case there were others to earn. Because that is something that wasn't again in the previous build. But it is now additional objectives, secondary objectives that you can do just to show that you did them. Uh, it was a nice touch in Desperados 3 where you could try and do a mission while earning all the stars. And I was really hoping they'd implement the same thing in this game. And uh, with, with badges, it seems like that is what they're going to do. I don't think there were others because this is a tutorial mission. I'm not sure if they show up listed, whether you've completed them or not. But moving forward, I really should keep an eye out for additional opportunities for additional badges. With that said, this is also a fun part of, uh, of completing a mission. You can see exactly what you did when and where it'll track all your characters actions it'll include like quick saves and things like that i i, I really love this it, summaries like this are super cool to me they're super fun to me uh and uh it's it just it's just a way to like reminisce i guess and and remember what you did especially when these missions get longer this one was just about 20 minutes some of these will get pretty long and uh what i'll probably try and do is keep these episodes uh to like a mission each maybe with a bit of you know uh conversation and stuff here and there with regards to story progress and things like that but probably keep these to like a mission each uh and then for the longer missions try and cap them at about an hour long because i, I think that's a reasonable length for an episode but again let me know what you think in the uh, comments down below of course let's also keep uh, playing over here though i'm not calling it a session just quite yet because there is a little bit of conversation to be had now that uh, the red marley has risen but first Another kind of quick summary of exactly what we did. It'll break down who did what and when and how. It'll also track your kills and deaths. Um, this one, of course, was uh, forced upon us, but hey, it is what it is. And what it is, is a success. Ah, to be on the open sea again. Come to me when you are ready, Aphia Manicate. So this is our hub. It's our ship. Well, it's the Red Marley. I don't know if, if it's fair to call it our ship. Uh, but it is our ship. We'll be captaining it. Now, this is where we'll uh, do a variety of things, including uh, test out our other crewmates, check out, uh, you know, missions and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and have this conversation with the Marley to get our first day on the job started, shall we? All right, ship. What's our next move? Five of my crew are still on Moro's reach. I will not leave them behind. I like a challenge, but those were a lot of acolytes. We could use a little backup. My skeleton crew cannot wander on shore. What we need is another cursed. Suleidi and Toya were left on deck. Black pearls ripped from their chest. They'll need new ones. Talk to old Gertrude, and also to Pete and the Nameless One. I'll scrape together what soul energy I have left for this ceremony. Black pearls. A rare sight these days. Aye. Which is why we keep them well hidden. Don't let my talking day call scare you. They are mostly harmless. Mostly. The um, black pearls are a very interesting mechanic as well. As you acquire them, you're able to uh, awaken the other undead crew who are able to, uh, you know, travel the shores. And uh, again, as I briefly said earlier, you can choose which order to gain access to them in. So uh, once you rescue them, uh, you'll you'll have their bodies basically. But to bring them back to life, much like Soleidi and uh, Toya, you have to uh, hit them with black pearls. And there are a limited number uh, out there. You'll gain access to all crew, but uh, over time. So you have to pick and choose which order to do things in. Uh, but of course, to to start, we we are a little tunneled. Mordecai, you finally returned. Sorry, but I'm not Mordecai. The name's Ephia Manicato, freshly hired. <laughs> you always knew how to get a chuckle out of this old lady. I don't think you heard me. I'm just play along. Yes, I'm Mordecai. I'm here for the Black Pearl. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Here you go. I've stored it in my right eye, freshly plucked from the socket, if you will. Good stuff. That was interesting. As I said, mostly harmless. Right, so we got ourselves one black pearl. 
uh, let's go ahead and secure a second one. You'll notice as well that occasionally we'll come across things like doors, cave entrances, and stuff like that, which will be connected to other parts of the level. So I just want to highlight that you can use those to very quickly travel to different positions uh, and you know sneak around enemies and stuff like that, or move around our ship much more quickly as well to get to uh, you know different spots. So let's pop out over here and make our way Straight over to, to the, the back. <laughs> I think uh, actually I think I can go over this way. Either way, let's make our way down. Yeah, there we go. And speak to this other skull. No second thoughts, eh? Hey, Pete, look. It's her again. The one with the curly toes. Excuse me? Oh, ignore him. His forehead isn't quite where it used to be. Now, what's your name? I'm Aphia. The Marley sent me for a black pearl. Did she now? <laughs> well, I'm sure to tell you that it's gone. Pete, nameless, hand her the pearl, or I will throw you overboard. As if. <laughs> we didn't really want it anyway. Take it, Athea, before we accidentally lose it again. Now the pearls are ours. I barely have enough energy for one ceremony. So you must choose who to revive. Alright, so you can revive dead crewmates if you have a black pearl and soul energy to charge it. Revive a crewmate, interact with their body, and select revive. You can earn black pearls and soul energy by completing missions. And your missions will specify what you get from them when you go to pick one. Uh, first things first though, let's go ahead and pick which crew member to uh, revive. We have up over here... Actually, no, wait, what is that? That's just a, that's just a stash of stuff. Where 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 are where are our crewmates? Right there's one. There's the other. Right, cool. Make our way over. We should use the door because we're rushing. Or are we just gonna? Yeah, we're gonna use that door. We'll pop out over here because the AI is smart enough to figure that out. Like and let's take a look at our options. So we have So Lady, who again you'll be familiar with if you saw my playthrough of the. Uh, early access beta but let's take a look nonetheless just as a reminder and also for those of you who are watching this for the first time so so lady is the ship doctor she takes care of the marley skeleton crew and makes cures for nasty soul sicknesses she's also deadly with a blade the soul infused plants so lady grows in her sick bay help her research the mysteries of the curse now i do want to say the skeleton crew joke is amazing i just wanted to i just just wanted to point that out it's beautiful Anyway, signature skills, cover seeds. So Lady can throw a vial to grow a very handy bush somewhere in her vicinity, perfect for hiding in open spaces. Um, you can only have one of these out at a time, but that's often enough to just like close the gap or, or create a hiding space between two hiding spaces, making it easier to like get to a third hiding space, right? Uh, or to that second one. Wander dust, meanwhile, is a foul odor that will daze the hardiest Inquisition soldier. The strange spores make enemies walk away from her in a straight line. Again, you can interrupt patrols, you can interrupt, uh, uh, you know, viewing angles, like where they've got, uh, like where they're looking back and forth, and just turn somebody around, send them the other way, and, you know, sneak through a door or pass an alley or whatever it might be. Quite powerful stuff. In fact, all the abilities that I've seen across the characters are, are, are quite powerful. Archetypes. Position changer, capable of making guards leave their post for a while. One per team recommended. This is uh, very true. Body hider, knows how to cover their tracks and leaves no body behind. Now, I don't know if there are people who cannot hide bodies, but the fact that this archetype is listed suggests that's the case. Uh, we can flip through these guys using these arrows up there, but instead, why don't we go ahead and do this in-universe, because he's right here, and take a look at our other friend here, Toya. This guy's a lot of fun. The ship's cook. He prepares tasty, soul-infused meals for the crew. Toya is a master in the arts of battle and cooking, always eager to challenge himself in both the kitchen and the field. He also makes a mean octopus carpaccio. His signature skills include his katashiro, which is a small paper charm that Toya can leave behind, and only he can see it. And he can use that for Shadow Step, which allows him to teleport back to the Katashiro from any distance. He will attack and kill the enemy marked by the Katashiro. So if somebody's within a certain range of it, uh, when you Shadow Step, he'll go in and kill them with a very long animation that is extremely cool. Um, but apart from that, you can also just use it to teleport to a different location 
anywhere across the map without needing to have a target within that area. So it's a very powerful kind of combination. A bird's voice separately is a whistle that'll attract the attention of nearby enemies and draw them to his location. So you can pop the Katashiro down, you can use the whistle to attract somebody over, and then shadow step and, and kill them from a distance, right? Uh, by the way, I forgot to point out passive abilities can climb, Ivies can swim, Some whereas Shalady over here has the same as well. Toya. Anyway, back to Toya. Ready. Position changer as well, and he's a killer. Uses powerful skills to eliminate guards. So a couple of options over here that we can take to our next mission. We have to pick one between Little the two of them because we only have enough uh, energy for one revival. And I think I know which way I'm Consider going to go, done. but uh, hmm. Am I convinced? Yeah, I'm convinced. We're going to go with Toya. We're going to go with Toya. Um, I'm still ladies very powerful as well, but I think I like Toya just that little bit more in terms of his, uh, his, his toolkit, in terms of the options he has. So, Toya, join us. Am I sure? Yes. Yes, I'm very sure. Another black pearl in my chest. A feast of energy for my soul. Much obliged. So, you're Toya of the East. Just Toya, if you please. This ocean has been my home for longer than I ever lived in Japan. You're the assassin who challenged the Dread Captain and became the ship's cook. You seem to know a lot about me, when I don't even know your name. A fia monicato. I'm the one who pulled you out of Ignatius jars. Hmm. A promising start. I look forward to seeing you work, a fia monicato. Welcome back, ship cook. Ah, Marty. So I was the one to receive one of your spares. A wise choice. You must get used to your new pearl quickly. The training deck is ready for you. Understood. I will speak to Estelle and head there at once. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, train with him because I do believe we have to. Yes, we have to do our first day on the job. So over to Estelle we now go and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll train Toya and uh, familiarize ourselves with his skills. If he's willing to make his way over, are you? Oh, hey, hello, we can actually have a conversation with him. This is different from uh, the beta as well. Or I should say the early access build, or exactly how to call it. He's just making some, making some sunny side up eggs. This is all, this is all new. So yeah, I guess I could speak to him and uh, learn what's going on with him and his life and watch some fun animations as well. This is really fun, actually. Neat. All right, cool. But let's not get too distracted right now. Let's stay focused over here and speak to Estelle. I'll be there soon. <laughs> I can just pet you? Okay, hang on. No, 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 let's stay focused. <laughs> so easily, just, no, it's better. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I have no words. <laughs> Is that it? Is that the whole interaction? That's hilarious. Alright, okay. I'm glad I did that. Back on task, though. To our main quest. Oh, I gotta bring Toya in here. Alright, okay, fair enough. Toya, let's bring you over, buddy. Out of this conversation. I was wondering about that. I was wondering about that. Rush on over, buddy. And let's go. Ahoy there, Estelle. I require your guidance to the training deck. Uh, apologies, but your banana cookies will have to wait. Once my kitchen is restored, you will have your cookies. Now, down we go. I love the character art on that monkey. Simple. All right. 
So uh, this is meant to tutorialize our, uh, our, our, our characters as we unlock them to learn exactly how they work. If I can cut them short, I will because I'm fairly familiar with almost all of them. And uh, I don't think we have to go through all of them. But this one we have to go through because it's uh, part of the, uh, you know, objectives, of course. Uh, all right, let's move up. Take a look at you. Use Bird's voice to lure this guy the out. The soul beckons. An enemy approaches. Death awaits the fiend. Indeed it does. Go ahead and quick save. Very sensible, Molly. Go ahead and the pop that. Takes shape. All right now. Who is that? Buddy's going to come over. Nice and slow. We can speed time up as well, by the way. We do have time controls for uh, repetitive Secure moments. Enough. Down this guy goes. Sufficiently nice and easy. And that attack animation is a lot quicker. 2.5 seconds compared to Afia's 5, I believe. I keep pronouncing her name wrong, by the way. I got into the habit of saying Afia, but it's Afia. I'm going to try and get uh, get better at that. Anyway, let's creep on up. Move on over. For someone whose bones brim with soul energy... Your little flute remains humble. Noise is the salt of any good ambush recipe. Magic or no, the oldest tricks never fail. Very true. Next up, we've got what? Not all guards will be affected the same way by distractions. The Commissarius will turn toward the noise, but he won't leave his position. Lure the Acolyte behind the wall so you can attack her without being detected. All right, so let's creep up to here. That's our Commissarius up there. Yes, indeed. So, all right, let's go ahead and blow our whistle over here so as not to attract this guy as well, just because we don't need to. On my way. All right now. Bring you over there. Who was that? Tuck in, come over. A single strike. And... Maiden, hone my senses. Dive in. Begins. Good stuff. Nice and easy, nice and fast. Pick up the body. And you can see Toya actually stands when moving bodies around. So, again... Something to be wary of. Creep up to here. I and... The finish this guy the off. Get that key so we can leave. Away we go. Up to here and out that way. And I think that's all we need to do as far as uh, training with Toya is concerned. Might need to do his other abilities as well to actually see his uh, paper uh, thing in, in, in action. But again, I know how it works, so I don't actually need to do these tutorials. We can just push on through and hopefully call it over here. Well done, ship cook. I have prepared another training room and a little test should you feel up to it. The stairs will get you topside. Now, these are optional. And uh, I'm tempted... I'm tempted to just kind of skip them. Because again, like I said, I, I know how they work. Let me know how you feel about that. For future characters, I'll, I'll keep your feedback in mind and uh, and make choices accordingly. But for the you time being, we're good. Are you on? Yeah, I'm good. I don't. I don't. I'm fine. Decision. Thanks for checking. Expertly done, ship cook. Your galley has been cleaned and stocked. Return to deck. Well done. Now we must make plans, Afia Manicato. All right. So. Again, maybe I missed out on like an achievement or something there. I'm not 100% sure, but it's fine. It's fine. I saved up on time. Let's have another conversation now with the Marley. I'm glad to see Toya back on his feet. Alas, I can spare no more soul energy. We'll manage. Two cursed pirates are a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of, I was wondering what my position in the crew should be. That depends on your qualities. A fear manicato. Measured by your outrageous cut, you'd have to be the captain. And you are not the captain. All right. How about the navigator? I can find my way alone. Why would I need a navigator? I can lend a hand. Chart our course. Choose our landing. I've learned from the best. Interesting. Very well, navigator. Come to the map table in the captain's quarters. Alright, make our way over to the uh, map table up over here. And see exactly uh, what the Red Marley wants us to do. Again, this is what will ultimately allow us to determine which islands we go to, where we land, and all that good stuff. show every island we can visit. Right now, we are limited to Morrow's Reach. Chart a course there, Navigator. Eventually, of course, these clouds will disappear and we'll gain access to additional islands, freeing the game up and our options up significantly. Over tomorrow's reach, though. 
A ship needs a crew. This is where you pick your missions. Again, like I was describing earlier in this episode, missions all take place across an entire island. And you'll eventually be able to choose exactly where to land. And you'll be able to choose exactly where to leave as well. So your objective will be situated somewhere on the island. And based on where that objective is situated, you'll, you'll choose where to uh, arrive and, and where to leave from. Uh, it's a very interesting idea. It's also very, like, impressive. Because... It's the whole island. It's open to you. Now, the initial islands are a bit smaller and a bit more contained. The missions are a bit more contained. But as you go further along, it gets it gets quite large. And uh, and it's like semi-open world almost. It's, it's quite interesting. Anyway, a ship needs a crew. Return to Morrow's Reach and free the crew from the clutches of the Inquisition. This will give us some vigor, which is going to allow us to, I believe, awaken another uh, crew member as long as we have an additional Black Pearl, which we do. Uh, this happens during the day. It's medium length mission, crew size of two, and a FIA has to be part of that crew. Had to think about that name there. Um, time of day is important because during the day, you're much more easily spotted, whereas at night, obviously people aren't able to see as far, though, of course, torches and stuff will impact how people can spot you. Uh, again, we can set up our difficulty as we desire um, for each individual mission. So, you know, if we feel like we have to up the ante, we can. And if we take a look at the logbook, I'm actually not sure what this does for us. Oh, hello. Island progression, island badges, mission badges. Hello. Red Marley Rise. Oh, no. No way. Were there really this many badges that I just didn't... Uh... No way. Holy crap. So this is interesting. With, uh, if I recall correctly, in Desperados 3, it would tell you how to earn the stars. Right, and so you knew exactly what to do, whereas here it's hidden. That changes things. All right, interesting, interesting. Separately, we have our so mission badges and island badges. Gotcha. All right, but you got to do them to figure out what they are. All right, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Either way, we'll be visiting Morrow's Reach on the morrow. This is where we're going to go ahead and call it a session, folks. But the next episode is actually going to be, yes, on the morrow. I'll be releasing it tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and release episodes, I think, every other day. Again, keeping them about an hour long or, you know, one mission each, uh, whichever makes more sense in terms of uh, uh, episode length. So uh, next time, we'll go ahead and free the crew from the clutches of the Inquisition. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, if you'd like to see more Shadow Gambit on the channel, please don't hesitate to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>